gonna be late. All right, man, I'm coming. Give me just a second. Hey, man, look, the big night is finally here. In just a few hours, we're gonna find out who's taking home this year's Heisman Trophy. Man, I always dreamed of being up on that stage and having my name up in them lights. Who knew I'd be able to take things this far? But say, man, we got about a 45 minute drive from here to the ceremony. So I'm gonna fill y'all in on everything that happened since the last time we talked. All right, so look, we're gonna pick up from where we left off last episode. Now, if you remember correctly, I was headed to the training facility to get some work done on the injury I had suffered during the Nebraska game. Well, I was forced to sit out the next two games due to that injury, but my teammates held it down and got the dubs in my absence. We were the number one ranked team in America and strong favorites to win the national championship. But first, we had to win our conference championship. Look, we take on Wisconsin at the Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis, but unfortunately, our starting quarterback Peyton wouldn't be playing as he suffered an injury in practice the week before. Man, I did everything I could to try to get us to a victory. We fell behind early, but my team rallied back late to send the game into overtime. But unfortunately, we come up just short and Wisconsin was going home with our championship. I had myself a very solid year. I ended the season top 10 in receiving yards in all of college football, and I made the Big Ten first team All-American list. But say, with my success on the field came a little recognition off the field. I landed my first NIL deal with the local Lansing car dealership. I was just required to do one commercial and a little bit of promo on social media, and then before I knew it, I was getting a bi-weekly check. But listen, I gave the majority of that money to Mari's parents to watch my son over the summer. Although I didn't want to be away from my shorty, I definitely couldn't turn down the opportunity I was given. Big Bro invited me and Mari to Vegas for the summer. Now, for Mari, it would be a vacation, but for me, it would be a chance to train with one of the best receivers in the NFL. As y'all know, Reggie is QB1 for the Raiders, so obviously he and Devontae Adams are super close. Man, I got the opportunity to spend some time training alongside them, and bruh, I soaked up so much game over the summer. DA gave me a few tips and tricks on how to beat the corners off the line and how to gain separation and man coverage. I would go on and use a lot of those pointers he gave me over the course of my season in Michigan. But say, it was almost time for me and Babe to head back, and me and my mom still hadn't had a real conversation. Well, one day, Reggie and Mari left to go to the grocery store, and, well, that left me and my mom there alone to talk. Anthony, it just blows my mind that after all I've done for you, you still feel like I don't love you. Yeah, you provided for me. Great. But where was the love? Where was the affection? Look, son, you're not a kid anymore. It's time for you to grow up and be a man. Grow up and be a man? Really? Well, when are you going to tell Reggie to grow up and be a man and stop treating him like a two-year-old? I knew that this was what that was about. I knew it. You jealous of your brother and you always have been. Man, I don't even know why I'm wasting my time trying to have this conversation with you. Instead of taking accountability for being a horrible mother to me, you try to turn it into something that's not. Man, you never gonna change. Look, whatever, Anthony, I'm too old to change. And if you can't see how much I love you, then that's something you'll have to take up with God. Well, as y'all can see, man, the conversation between me and my mom was interesting to say the least. Look, at that point, I just accepted the fact that our relationship wasn't gonna get no better than what it already was. I decided to keep my distance the rest of the trip and just enjoy my time with bro and Mari. But look, vacation was over and it was finally time to get back to work. I was now officially the number one receiver on the team and it was my senior year, so y'all know I wasn't playing no games. Man, look, I came into training camp in mid-season form. I didn't look at the football as just a football. Nah, see, it meant so much more to me. To me, the football was my dreams, my son, my girl, my future, my family. So I refused to let it hit the ground the entire camp. I mean, every pass that was thrown my way ended up as a completion. But say, the media heard about my off-season training with AD, and they asked me about it during a preseason press conference. I not only let them know how much better I had gotten since then, but also I let them know my goals for next season. Look, man, I know a lot of y'all may not believe in me and this team, but that's okay. Just remember to keep that same energy. I feel like we have a lot of key pieces returning from last year, and I truly believe we got what it takes to compete for a national championship. Not only that, I feel like I'm one of the best players in college football, so don't be surprised when you hear my name in that Heisman conversation. All right, y'all, so look, we only about 10 minutes away, and I can't lie, I'm getting pretty nervous. But obviously, I won't be able to record during the Heisman ceremony, so I'm just going to fill y'all in on everything that happened on the field throughout this season. But say, make sure to stay tuned to the end of this episode. That way, you can see your boy bring home that hardware. Say, man, the schedule makers didn't show us any love to start this season. You know, most teams' first game is against that pushover opponent that they just run the score up on. But nah, not us. We had two very tough matchups on the road. The first game was against a 1-0 South Carolina team that was coming off an eight-win season a year before. Now, we started off the game pretty flat and made a few mistakes that led to turnovers, but we didn't fold. 
we were able to draw the ball up the field and put some points on the board. South Carolina came out swinging and jumped out to a very big lead, so that meant it was time for me to take stage. Look, man, I came up clutch with a huge 40-yard bomb with just over a minute left before halftime, but the ref said I didn't get my feet down and it was called back. I don't know, man. Y'all tell me the play looked pretty clean and I felt like I was in bounds, but anyways, it was on to the next. With just 49 seconds left in the first half, I would channel my inner Randy Moss pulling down a one-handed grab on a 36-yard reception, and then my guy Keon went on to seal the deal with a 13-yard touchdown. On the very next drive, Malik would break off a huge 52-yard run up the middle of the defense. Man, our offense has so many weapons, it just don't make no sense. But look, I would use one of the pointers I got from Devontae Adams over the summer on this touchdown. Knowing that the corner didn't have any help over the top, I pushed him to the middle of the field and then made a beeline to the back of the end zone for six. That wasn't it though. I was just getting started. Look, there's not too many corners on this earth that can run with me stride for stride. So if I ever catch you backpedaling, you might as well consider yourself cooked. On what would be the game winning touchdown, I would use my speed and run right past the defense yet again. Man, I was so hyped on this play, I damn near broke my controller. But say, man, there's no better way to pick up from last season and have a huge opening game versus a very tough opponent on the road. On just seven receptions, I went for over 250 receiving yards and three tutties. Of course, this performance will earn me player of the week. Man, look, we put hands and feet on Oregon. I mean, we literally stumped them boys out. Look, I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't even play in the fourth quarter because the blowout was just that bad. I made a 78-yard house call in the second quarter, and that play just opened up the floodgates for a blowout win. My second reception of the game came with a huge hit by the safety, but I was still able to hang on for the 20-yard game. I literally only had two catches this game, but I was still able to crack over 100 yards. The next week, we was back at the crib versus 0-2 Wyoming, and I picked up right where I left off the week before, scoring the easy touchdown on the out route to the back of the end zone. But say, man, I ain't even gonna lie, I don't know what was going on with me this game. I was having trouble hanging on and securing the ball, which obviously resulted in like three drop passes. Man, bro, I absolutely hate dropping the ball because that Butterfinger title is a very hard title to get rid of. But man, listen, we knew not to play with this Wyoming team. I mean, even though they were 0-2 to start the season, they were still very dangerous. And we couldn't afford an early upset, especially not at home and especially not against Wyoming. As a matter of fact, bro, where is Wyoming? You know what? Never mind. But look, we got the easy win at home, and it was finally time for the game I had been waiting for. Eastern Michigan University. Say, man, go do your research on the history between Anthony King and Eastern Michigan University. But look, they knew it was smoke, and I knew it was smoke. My quarterback, Peyton, came up to me before the game, and he let me know he already knew what time it was, so to be on the lookout for the ball. I struggled a bit early on, but I think it was just because my nerves were so high, and I was trying too hard. But it wouldn't be long before I settled down and jumped right back in my bag. Look, the first three years of my college career, I was considered a possession receiver with the ability to make big plays. Well, <laughs> I think it's safe to say now I'm a big play receiver with the ability to complete the very tough possessions. Man, I'll give credit where it's due. EMU came in and did exactly what I expected them to do. They rolled over on their biggest stage of the season and only ended the game with three measly points. Hey, man, I did my thing, though, scoring two touchdowns, six receptions for a buck fifty. Say, man, y'all should already know what's going on. Our first snow game of the season would come at home versus number six ranked Penn State. Man, I swear the temperature had to be like negative three degrees outside. Even with gloves on, I still couldn't feel my hands. But look, at this point of the season, I felt like we were on cruise control. What I mean by that is everyone was doing their jobs and taking care of their assignments. I honestly think this was some of the best team football we had played all season. But look, I went on to have my normal impact in this game, but it would be the other pieces surrounding me that stepped up and made some big plays. In this game, we would have a lot of success in our run game, which was a very big bonus because up until this point, honestly, our offense was pretty lackluster unless the ball was in the air. The game versus Purdue wasn't even really a game. I mean, honestly, it was more so like my highlight tape. See, it would be here that I would make my bid for the best receiver in college football. I showed everything in this game. My speed and quickness to outrun the defense, my hands and my ability to make the tough catch in traffic and high point the ball, and even my vision and my ability to turn what should have been a 5-yard reception into a 42-yard house call. Listen, I'm telling y'all, I'm really that dude. But hey man, the thing I want y'all to keep in mind is I'm putting up these big numbers and making these huge plays all within the offense. Yeah, I'm not out here just doing my own thing and running my own routes. No, I'm taking whatever is given to me and using my skill to create more. Yet again, I went on to put on video game like numbers. I really cracked 150 yards on only six receptions. But speaking of smoking crack, I officially cracked the Heisman watch list. As a matter of fact, I was the only receiver on the list at the time. 
man, this was huge and all the added motivation I would need to fight through the second half of a tough season. We faced a bit of adversity versus a very solid 5-0 Iowa team at home. An early interception snatched the momentum out of what was shaping up to be a solid drive. I gotta say though, I'm proud of my guys. We didn't panic and credit to our defense who had their backs against the wall but still didn't even give up a field goal. Y'all should know I picked up right where I left off the game before. I became somewhat of a safety valve for our offense. When in need of a big play, look my way. But say my guy KC would come up clutch with a huge 70 yard touchdown as he was able to torch the defense and give us our first lead of the day. It was my turn to put some points on the board and y'all should already know whenever my number gets called, I'm going to answer every time. I truly believe I had evolved into an unstoppable force. I mean honestly, what could you do with me? My defense was way too good and my strength was way too strong to try to press me. And even if you gave me a little bit of cushion, I could either high point you or burn you deep. Like honestly, I became the total package. But look man, we did them Hawkeyes dirty. We sent them boys packing back home with the big L. Yet again, I put up huge numbers on very few receptions. I mean, three tuds, 200 yards on seven receptions. Who else is doing that? Next, we took on Indiana on the road. And I think out of all the Big Ten schools, I definitely like their stadium the most. But listen, man, that game was over with before it even started. Honestly, it wasn't even really a game. It was nothing more than just another stage for me to show how good I was. As a matter of fact, I broke the school record for receiving touchdowns in a single season. At the halftime, we was up like 40 to nothing. I didn't even put my pads back on. I was on the sideline with a raincoat and a fully dressed hot dog chowing down. But look, man, after the game, the media let me know that I had finally taken a number one spot in the race for the Heisman. Bruh, this couldn't have come at a better time because our next game was our biggest game of the season and I know everybody in the country would be watching. The Michigan vs. Michigan State rivalry is one of the best rivalries in college football. Even though I'm from the West Coast, I have been at MSU for two years now, so I have fully bought into the importance of this game. If you remember from last episode, Michigan beat us at home, ruining our perfect season and taking the bragging rights as the best team in Michigan. Well, <laughs> look man, I promised myself that wouldn't happen again. I was fully prepared to lay it all on the line and do whatever it took to secure the victory. But you'll notice the majority of these highlights are coming from the sideline point of view, right? Look, I don't know why, but I spent more time watching the game than actually playing in it. I wasn't in any type of trouble or injured at all, but for some reason I just wasn't in the game. and. Y'all know what happened the last time I questioned the OC about his play calling, so this time I kept my mouth shut and just took my spanking on my high knee like a man. I ain't gonna lie, bruh. Coming out versus Northwestern, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder, and I was feeling some type of way towards the coaches because, honestly, of what happened the week before versus Michigan. I mean, why wasn't I on the field? Like, I mean, like, not only did we lose and fall all the way down to the number nine team in the nation, but all of my Heisman hype had died down as well. I think had I gotten an explanation, I would have felt better, but the coaches didn't say a word to me, so I was forced to come up with my own conclusion. And that conclusion was, they was hating on me and they didn't want to see me win. So hey, it was what it was. I promised myself that going forward, I was going to do whatever was best for me. Not the coaches, not the team, and not the fans. We went on to win the blowout game at home, and I would break yet another record for most career touchdowns as a Michigan State receiver. The final game of the season, we'd be on the road taking on Minnesota at their place. Now, we got off to a very quick start as my guy Malik busted a 68-yard reception on top of the D. Then Minnesota came right back and put seven points on the board. But look, our starting quarterback Peyton was out with the injury, so my guy Noah was stepping up and taking his place and leading the offense. Now, his inexperience proved to be an issue as he would throw two interceptions early in the first half. Y'all know normally I would have took responsibility for those interceptions, but... Nah, bruh, the passes were actually severely underthrown. It would be all good, though, because regardless of how I felt about the coaching staff, I was still always going to have my team's back as that safety valve. I would catch a 27-yard touchdown, bringing us to within three, and then a few possessions later, my guy KC absolutely burnt the defense and completed a 65-yard reception, putting us right outside the end zone, and then my boy JB would take the two-yard handoff, giving us the lead. Now, we went on to win a pretty close game on the road, and we would officially end our season with a very impressive 11-1 record. Man, what a night. I still honestly can't even believe I'm here. But say, unfortunately, I came in third place in the Heisman voting, so obviously that means I'll be going home empty-handed. But it's okay though, I still made a name for myself in college football that'll last forever. Look, I don't know what the future holds, but I know for sure I'm not ready to hang up my cleats. So would y'all want me to continue this series into the NFL? Man, let me know down below. I'm on to the next one.